And I'm going to be making a video about a game from the Danaman 2003 match between Sergei Karyakin and Alexandra Kostinyuk. So Karyakin is playing white. And Kostinyuk opens with the Sicilian here and now e5. So this could transpose to a, a number of different lines. And she just chooses the direct d6. So now what... White, white plays knight d5 because he's trying to... Well, first of all, b4 was threatened. Um, so knight d5 is a very active move, and maybe he's thinking about playing bishop e3 um, to b6, for example, or playing c4 to break open the, the black um, queen side. And so what black is trying to do um, is, is undermine this really strong knight on d5, and maybe play on the king side, a king side attack with f5. So white is going to be playing on the queen side, and black is probably going to be trying to defend there while, while playing on the king side. So knight c7, um, there's a couple different moves here. Bishop e7 and knight f6 are probably the most common. Um, knight c7, it's just too slow. It's just too slow. And so Karyakin exploits this. With the immediate c4 to bust open, you know, these, these a6 and b5 pawns are kind of weak. So now taking with the e pawn was clutch because the pawn on c4, um, yes, it does get black, <coughs> a pawn majority on the king side, but the knight on c4 is just, white's pieces are just too strong. And his, his uh, lead and development here uh, is just too much for black. So bishop e2, just something to note here, if knight g4, bishop b6 immediately was possible so instead rook b8 prevents bishop b6 and now bishop e2 a4 good move white's just trying to gain some space and maybe lift the rook on the a file and so now knight b6 so this was uh Karyakin's idea i mean he's knight b6 the knight is just you know holding the pawn together and really cramping black on the queen side so knight d7 is logical and so finally, black gets to play f5. So here, you can maybe, uh, maybe kind of equality with f5, but white, Karyakin plays too accurately. So he plays f3, so just um, in case of f4, now he's got a retreat square for the bishop, and it also impedes black from playing e4. Couple of exchanges, and now b4. So Karyakin is just playing um, strictly positional chess. And he's just, he's just playing on, on the pressure he's got on the a6 pawn and the fact that black really hasn't been able to get her counterplay going. So bishop e3. Um, also bishop to a7 first was an idea. And simply rook b1. So getting out of the way of any potential problems and also maybe starting to threaten uh, b5 here. So queen f7 is definitely a logical move. I want to put some pressure on the weak d5 pawn. And now queen d3. And here I was thinking the first thing I thought for black was to play rook takes c4, but it just doesn't work. It flat out doesn't work. If queen takes uh, rook, rook d1 here, and white's going to pick up that pawn, just, I mean, it's just way too much material. White, white's just uh, too much material. And if bishop takes, thinking to get the, the exchange back, queen takes d6, and the rook's hanging on b8. So the exchange stack just doesn't work. <coughs> and now with queen d3, white's really got a lot of pressure going into the queen side. And starting, you know, combinations might be hanging in the air. So rook a8, just trying to defend the pawn. And now queen h5. And Costinio just, it was a bad plan. <clears throat> maybe um, she should have tried to play for e4 and distract white with some activity in the middle. But the plan just wasn't, it wasn't correct. So she had to defend the, the f5 pawn. Um, 
But I don't know. I mean, I think maybe Bishop D8 trying to just really trying to hold on. I don't know. Instead, Queen H5. And the plan is just too slow. To bishop G5. I mean, it's a good idea to trade off. Um, this bishop is just exerting a lot of pressure over the whole board. But even still, white, white maintains control of all the diagonals. Now queen b6. So Karyakin is a pretty sneaky guy here. Queen b6 with the idea that bishop takes d5. And now just queen takes a6. So he just drops a bomb on Kostinuik. So queen takes a6 is a pretty crazy move to even consider. And um, the tactics in the game back it up. So Kostinuik, a couple of checks. And the weakness of black's back rank. So now if queen f8... This is going to lead to mate immediately. And I think maybe this is what Castanuic missed here. I mean, I don't know. Queen a6 is just a crazy move. But queen e8. And now king f7. It, it seems like black is going to get out of this up and exchange. Maybe, maybe this kind of position. But, you know, maybe black... I mean, I guess black is winning here. So maybe that's what Kostinuik thought originally. The problem is, Karyakin plays rook. So here he plays rook a8. And that's it. <coughs> I mean, really, really nice combination. So the, the pin, you know, and there's nowhere to move the rook. White's just going to be up a piece. Easily. Just, just straight up a piece. So that was the combo. Queen takes a6. And rook a8. Very accurate, very, very nice combination by Karyakin. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for tuning in.